Hey friends, it's Corey from Hey Let's Make Stuff, back with another sublimation tutorial. Have you ever found a sublimation blank that you just love? I am sort of obsessed with these sublimation cheese boards. So we are going to be making one of these in today's video and I am so excited about it. I got this sample cheese board from Craft Express and I gave it a shot and I loved it so much that I ordered more. It really sublimates beautifully and I think you're gonna love this unique project. Sublimation cheese boards make great gifts. So the holidays are coming up, a really great holiday gift, maybe for your favorite chef, a great hostess gift. You can make them for housewarming gifts. The one I'm making today is actually a Santa tray. Now I could have created an image with milk and cookies and snacks for the reindeer, but we are on the west coast of the US and I think by the time Santa gets all the way around the world, maybe by the time he gets to us, he's tired of milk and cookies. So I have made Santa a wine and cheese board. So on this board, we have something sweet. You can give him a little chocolate chocolate, some fancy cheese, and a glass of fine wine, because we all know those reindeer really drive the sleigh. You could also make a more traditional cheese board with a monogram. You could put a family recipe on here. That would be really lovely. You could also make it a little mixed drinks tray for cutting lemons and limes, a little charcuterie tray. There are a lot of ways to use this blank. For this video, I am giving you this Santa cheese tray PNG for free. You can download that from my craft library on my blog. So you can go to heyletsmakestuff.com slash library, request the password if you don't already have it, then you can log in on that same web page. Then there are two ways to find the file. On that main page, there is a sublimation button. If you scroll down, that will take you to the sublimation section and you can look for S19. You can also search that page by using Control F on a PC or Command F on a Mac. Just search for S19 and you'll be taken to the download. There are two links for each download. The first is the download itself and it will download a zip with the PNG inside. The second link will take you to the blog post for this video if you wanna read more. So what are you going to need to make this project? Of course, you're gonna need a sublimation printer with sublimation paper. For this project, I'm using my new Brother SP1 sublimation printer. It is a newer sublimation printer to the market and I really like it. I think it's really great for crafters and hobbyists. I will go ahead and link my review to that in the description. I'm also using my Walla Press from Heat Transfer Warehouse. It's a 15 by 15 inch clamshell press. I really, really love it. If you have an easy press or other handheld press, I'm not sure it's the best press for this particular project. Because you need firm, even pressure, I find that things like tiles and slates are just much harder with a handheld press. That doesn't mean that you can't do it. I just wanted to give you a heads up that these blanks are not the cheapest and a handheld press may not give you the best results and I don't want you to be disappointed and spend your money on something that's not gonna work very well. You're also gonna need alcohol and a microfiber cloth to clean the tile before we press. You'll need heat resistant tape, heat resistant gloves, and butcher paper. And then the dreaded green pad. If you have been watching my sublimation videos for a while, you'll know that I really do recommend this green pad, especially when doing hard blanks. So ceramic blanks like tiles or ornaments, um, slates, I really, really like this green pad. This green pad is not cheap, and that is one of the biggest reasons that people don't use it. But if you have a blank that has just a slightly curved edge, and I have to say this is very flat, but especially if you wanna do an, uh, an image that bleeds off the edge, I would get this green pad. If you're doing a lot of sublimation, it's really, really useful. Basically, it has metal fibers inside the pad, and the pad, when you put it on top of your blank, will actually curve to the edges and any uneven surface you have on your blank, which doesn't happen with the top of the heat press. And then this gets just as hot as the heat press plate because it has those metal fibers inside. So you get something that's sort of conforming to all the edges of your blank and getting just as hot as the heat press, and so you get a really, really good image. You can try it without. The instructions for this don't even say to use it, but I do find that I just get better results on tiles and slates when I do use it. I'm also using Adobe Photoshop. You can use whatever program you would like to print. I just find Adobe Photoshop to be very easy for me and I like the prints that I get, but if you wanna use something like Google Docs or even Cricut Design Space, you can use that instead. Let's pop into Photoshop to print our image. So I've opened the PNG in Photoshop and you'll notice over here that I've um, actually designed this image quite large. I wanted people to be able to put it on a much larger tray if they had one. So we need to resize our image. The sublimatable tile in the cheese board is just under eight inches. So I'm gonna make my image seven inches wide. Now you'll notice that my artboard here is too big. So I'm gonna go to image, trim, and I'm going to trim off all of the transparent pixels. Just like that. Now I can zoom back in and you can see that I have a seven inch image. I'm gonna hit print. Here in the print settings, I wanna make sure I have my brother selected. I'm gonna scroll down and under functions, I'm going to choose emulsion down. This is how you flip your image in Photoshop. Then I'm going to go ahead and click print to print my image. 
First up, we're gonna remove the tile from the wood part of our blank, and we're gonna go ahead and set that aside. Next, we're gonna set our heat press. I have mine set to 400 degrees for 300 seconds with firm pressure. It is a very long press. You'll want to test the pressure of your heat press before it heats up. Basically put your blank in there and make sure that it is firm pressure. If you're using that green pad, make sure to take that into account as well. We have our image here that we printed earlier, and next I'm going to clean my blank. I like using alcohol and a microfiber cloth on um, hard surfaces. That's because we have oils in our fingertips that can really stick to um, hard blanks. You can use a lint roller, but I don't think it works quite as well as alcohol. Once the alcohol has evaporated, we can add our image. So I'm actually going to flip it over here and I can kind of see through to see where I want to put my image here. I wanna make sure that it's centered. It's a little hard to see, but let's do it here. Now I'm just gonna make like a little bit of a mark here on each side so I know exactly where it goes. Then I'm gonna flip everything over and I'm gonna tape it from the back. I use those little lines to make sure I have it centered where I wanted it. And then I'm gonna tape it from the back. It's just easier this way. I've done it from the front and that was very difficult so we're gonna do it from the back this time. Just like that. Now let's open up our press. I will add one sheet of butcher paper here. And then I'm gonna flip my design over. I'm gonna make sure that it still looks centered and straight, looks good to me. I'm gonna place it in the center of my press. I find that placing it in the center is the best. I'm gonna add another sheet of butcher paper on top. Then I'm gonna add my green pad if you're using it, just like that. Make sure it covers the entire image. And then I'm gonna press it for that 300 seconds. So when it's done, I'm gonna pull it out. I'm gonna use my heat resistant gloves to remove that green pad. And then I'm just gonna let the tile cool for a little bit. All right, this has been cooling for a while and it is still pretty hot. So I'm gonna wear my heat resistant gloves. I'm gonna see how this turned out. So I've got tape here. Oh, I just love this blank. It sublimates so beautifully. Now this is very interesting to me. So this is the one I just made and this is the one I made first. And I used my sawgrass to print the bottom one and I used my brother to print the top one. And you can really see a difference in the color in these two images. I'm gonna throw the design up on the screen here and you can actually see that the brother version is closer to the color that I started with. The bottom one here is printed from my sawgrass and the colors are much darker. I like them both, but the brother is actually a little bit more true to color to my original image. Overall, I am really happy with this project. I love how these blanks sublimated. They just are really, really fun for gifts or even for yourself. If you have any questions about making sublimation cheese boards, of course, I will answer those down in the comments. If you found this video helpful or inspiring, I would appreciate a like. Follow my channel for more weekly sublimation, Cricut, and laser content. I'll see you next time.